Welcome to Atlanta Live. We're so glad you're with us tonight. Atlanta, we love you. We're so glad we're going to come into your home. I'm one of the co-hosts, Jeff Taylor, and with me... Renee M. Beavers. Renee Beavers. Well, Renee, who do we have on the program? We've got an exciting program yes, for you. Yes, it is going to so You're going to enjoy this. I mean, get ready. It's going to be a great show. Yeah. We have Dr. Michelle. We have Pastor Linda. And we have a musical guest, Jason Haller. Yes. And we have Kia Thomas. Yeah, Kia Thomas. Kia Thomas. It's going to be amazing. Gonna You're, be you show. are absolutely going to be. T so if you know someone that has been dealing with depression or needs healing, yes. go get, text them, call them, do whatever you can. And we want you to tell them to tune in because tonight... You're gonna, you may have never called into a television show, but you need to call in tonight. If you're dealing with depression, if you're dealing with an area of healing, or if you're needing God to touch you in a physical way, a mental way, whatever, you may not even understand all that I'm saying, but I'm telling you, you're going to want to go to the phones and be in on some of the ministry time in this show. I realize that that sounds like a big sales pitch, but I'm right. telling you, yeah. the Spirit of God has a way of orchestrating this program. When we are doing our pre-show kind of uh, conversation, yes. it is amazing the tapestry that God has woven together just for this show. So yeah. get ready, because we have a musical guest uh, uh -huh. that is going to sing, all, and we're starting it off. We're yes. starting off with Healer. Healer. Jason Fowler. Yes. Show my healer, savior and food. 
healed yes, by the stripes are. that Jesus bore on his back. Yes. Wow. Yes. That is amazing. It is, uh, it is the ministry of Jesus it is. to save, to heal, and to deliver. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. We're so excited. Yes. It, this is, this is going to be a, good. It's a great time for us as believers to live in a time where we have access to God at our fingertips. And we use his presence like we use text messaging. Mm -hmm. We would really know we were healed. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. That's good. That's yeah. good. Uh, our first guest is a 30 years. She's been in wow. neuropsycho uh, a neuropsychologist. And she's board certified clinical neuropsychologist for 30 years. She's the real deal. Uh, it's great. She's been doing this for 30 years and she's only 33. Yeah, I know, because she so, looks like she's like 20. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but she's the author of three books, th award-winning books, and uh, insights from a doctor's personal journey uh, called Hope Prevails, yeah. and uh, also Hope, uh, the Hope Prevails Bible Study, yes. uh, and Breaking Anxiety's, Anxiety's Grip. Grip. She is also a speaker and frequent media specialist and Fox News contributor on mental health and wellness. I want you to in welcome to Atlanta Live, Dr. Michelle Bankson. Yes. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. So what drew you all the way from Dallas, Texas to Little old Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> well, my husband would tell you it's because he went to Georgia Tech. So oh. <laughs> for him, I'm coming home. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's great. You have, you have for 30 years, clinical neuropsychologist. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a hard word, obviously, for me to say. <laughs> so uh, I'm getting my brain wired correctly to say it. But what does that actually entail? What, how does that differ from a regular psychologist? That is an individual, Jeff, who has gone on for additional study to truly understand the relationship between our brain and our behavior, mm. which is pivotal if we really want to make change. We need to understand why we do what we do, why we say the things that we say, and then I help patients to figure out how can they be most effective in their God-given calling. Wow. Wow. What is the... what? I mean, you've written three award-winning books now. What is has become your uh, mission right now? What is the thing that's really burning on your heart? Truly, it is helping people understand the power of our words and our thoughts. Yeah. I will be very honest and say at the beginning of my career, I didn't even understand mm. how powerful it was to recognize our thoughts. But scripture says that we are to take captive every thought. And there is a reason because our feelings, which people love to run their life by, but our feelings are really just the outward manifestation of the thoughts we believe. Mm. So we have to pay attention to where are thoughts, those thoughts coming from and do they line up with God's Word? Would you say that one more time? Because someone heard that and they go, uh, you know, they, and they might not have a DVR to, to rewind <laughs> right. on. So would you, would you say that one yes. more time? Because that's a powerful... It, it is. It, it is the crux of my ministry, really, to understand that while our feelings can be compelling, they are truly only the outward manifestation mm. of the thoughts that we believe. Wow. Wow. Yeah. How does that, uh, did you have, a, I, I, I don't want to dominate the class. Well, you, you know, I think about so many times we don't realize that when you talked about the relationship between your thoughts and your actions, I think that that's something you can kind of really expound on that. Our actions have an origin and you help people to understand that. So what would be a good starting point when someone comes to you who needs help? What would be a starting point that you would start work working with them? Well, with? often I would give them a personal example. When I was in the pit of depression, which was after I had been in practice for decades, mm. I was in such a deep, dark place, and I was doing all the things that I had told my patients to do. Therapy, medication, diet, exercise, rest. I prioritized all those things, and they were helpful but they were truly not enough to eradicate the depression. And so while I was trying these things, I was looking around at other people and everybody else seemed so joyful, but I couldn't get that joy. And so I started believing, well, I must just be joy immune. Mm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And the more I would believe that, the more depressed I became wow. until one day, and I know it was the Holy Spirit, he said, that's not what my word says. That's right. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, 
My word says, though weeping may last for a night, my joy comes in the morning. Wow. So if my joy comes in the morning, Michelle, you cannot be joy immune. Amen. Wow. That's and that's an example of how I had believed a lie, which perpetuated my feeling, feeling. depressed. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And I had to then go to the word and say, does this line up with the word? And if it does wow. not, I have to kick it out wow. and stand on God's word. Right. I love that. That's amazing, the power of the word. It's so powerful. God says in the word that he's already given us everything we need for life and godliness. Yeah. But that means we have to know the word. Mm -hmm. We have to stand on the word. We have to declare the word. And that was part of my healing was to write down scriptures that refuted the lies. And every time I would see the post-it notes with that scripture, I would recite it out loud three times. And people have said, well, why did you do that? For one simple reason, God's word says faith comes by hearing, hearing. and hearing, hearing by the word, by the word, the word of God. Yeah, wow. So every time I would see these scriptures and recite it, it was getting down deeper and deeper in me to the point that then I believed it. Wow. And you know, the enemy is not going to be convinced until you're convinced. Wow, that's right. That's right. You know, here we have, you have a clinical neuropsychologist yes. that is saying, wait a minute, I was in practice, I w but I still was suffering in these areas, and yet she went to the Word. Right. She didn't just go back to all of the... And I'm sure that was quite exposing and made you quite vulnerable yes. to be able to have Absolutely. to admit when you started actually coming out of it and having to minister and then say, hey, listen, I've... how did you handle that kind of vulnerability? Initially, I had shame, and that's what the enemy does. The enemy tempts us into things like depression, anxiety, mm. doubt. But then when we give in to his temptation, then he shames mm. us right. mm. for having given in. And I went wow. through shame, shame thinking, the other clinicians aren't gonna refer to me anymore. My patients won't have as much respect for me because I clearly didn't have all the answers. But what I found as I slowly started sharing my story is that it made me more relatable because then when I talked to patients, they knew I understood. Yeah, yeah. It was no longer head knowledge. Yeah, in theory and textbook. But I could yeah. have the compassion because I really did understand. Wow. So, so if you have someone who is struggling with depression, what would be some of the indicators that they would know that they are in that state? What would be some of the things you could kind of help someone to say, these are some of the things you could look for to see if you are struggling with this depression or anxiety. And there are many symptoms, but one thing that is important to know is that depression does not present the same way for everybody. Oh, wow. But typically, there is some kind of change in mood. Mm -hmm. And it's not always crying and can't get out of bed. For some people, depression presents as irritability, agitation, frustration, or anger. Right. But frequently, there is also a change in daily living functioning. So sleep, and some people will sleep too much, other people will struggle with insomnia. There's often a change in appetite, eating too much or eating too little. And people will say, yeah, but maybe I'm just going through the blues. And if there's just a few of these symptoms and it doesn't go on for a prolonged period of time, you might just be hitting a bump in the road. We do right. have circumstances that affect our mood, but if multiple symptoms are lasting more than a couple weeks at a time, then I'd recommend that they seek out professional help. And the first place I would tend to recommend is go to your physical doctor. Yes. Mm. Because frequently there are medical conditions mm -hmm. that will present with symptoms that mimic depression. Yeah, yeah. And if you are cleared medically, then maybe it's time yeah. to get some help. What, 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 if, they if they get cleared physically and say the doctor says, everything seems to be fine. Uh -huh. What would you then recommend is the next step? Is, is it more spiritual like you're talking about or is it more therapeutic uh, and, and seeking out therapy? And it could be both, both? at the same time, yeah. but not everybody who calls themselves a Christian therapist right. structures therapy based on the word of God. Right. They may be a believer, but they don't always utilize the word in their therapy. Yeah. But that is where it's so important that we go because truly, as I was going through this and I was trying everything else, I prayed and said, God, it's not enough. I obviously, I'm missing something and either you need to show me what that is or you need to take me home. And I was very wow. serious. Wow. And I've never heard the audible voice of God, 
but it was a knowing and he said, Michelle, as long as you're not willing to address the spiritual roots of disease, it is like you're putting a Band-Aid on an infection oh, wow. and hoping it will get well. Wow. And that's when the light bulb went off because I had been addressing the physical and the emotional and the cognitive, but I didn't even know how to begin with the spiritual. Wow. And that's when he started showing me, it comes back to the word. Yeah. You know, John 10, 10 says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. But the second half of that verse is, yes. but I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. Right. And when it comes to depression, our enemy comes to steal our joy and kill our peace wow. and attempt to destroy our identity. Wow. wow. But we can have victory over yes, that. Yes, we can. Yeah. We can. When you when you say identity, what when what are uh, th 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 that might mean for the next segment? I'm yes. not sure. I, I'm not sure. That <laughs> is the next... a, no, we don't want to go to yeah, that. No, yeah, no, yeah. But, uh, Let's go into worship. Right? Yeah, <laughs> we're going to go to worship in just a yes. second. But when when you're we're we're going to do that. We're going to hold off on that because it's intriguing to me, and intriguing to our viewers that there is a real. We need to get into that infection. Yes. We need to get it, and I want us to go back in the next segment yes. and talk about how do we we start with the word. What are the other some of the other things that we can start with that can really kind of yes. then get back to where? Because I think too many times we do yes. we as a society mm -hmm. we're recommended only to just treat the symptoms, yes. but right. not get into the root. Yes. But before that, so stay tuned. Listen. Jake you don't want to go there. anywhere. You want to hear the rest of this. We have another segment with Dr. Uh, Dr. Bankson. So, but we're going to hear Jason Fowler. He's going to see family. He's seeing How family. How appropriate. Wow. <laughs> we take will grow deeper on our face and the truth will always keep us free and no one will see what you know about
family. Family. Doesn't matter what color, or, creed, or what it's like, background, and, and you know, church we're, name. We're going to have Dr. Dr. Bankson to talk to us about how family can sometimes cause anxiety, mm. and I think that's a good place for you to kind of help us with that. What are some of the signs of that? Yeah, and so many people who would come into my practice struggle with both. Yes. Not always, but both, sometimes both. depression and anxiety. Okay. Yeah. They often go hand in hand, but anxiety will often present a little bit differently than depression does. Mm. There's often more of a physical manifestation. Mm -hmm. It will creep up in terms of stomach aches, butterflies in the stomach, or feeling like you've got the weight of the world on your shoulders. And that's anxiety. That's anxiety. Yeah. And and with that will come concentration difficulty difficulty making decisions, feeling overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Wow. And even a tendency to be perfectionistic can be rooted yeah. in anxiety. We tend to think of that as a good thing, wow. but it, it can go too far and it can be sure. paralyzing. Unhe yes. Unhealthy, yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, and how does that how does that uh, how does that render someone how, how can they how can they kind of tell wh which one that they're dealing with? Um, you're, you, you, said, you, you gave us some symptoms, but how, how does it differ in some ways than depression? Anxiety has other signs and thought processes tend to be a little bit different. One of the things that will alert me to the fact that I'm going down anxiety's path is that big old what if. What if? When oh, I wow. find myself wow. going, oh, well, what if this and what if that and what if the other thing? That is a surefire sign that rather than trusting that God's going to get me through and take yeah. care of right. it, I'm allowing worry or fear or anxiety to rule my mind. Maybe and sense my of loss behavior. of control or. Yes. Yeah. And that's frequently where anxiety starts because as humans, we desire to be in control, whereas God says, <laughs> I want you to surrender exactly. yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah. And we really have very little control over anything, mm -hmm. but God wants to be in control of our lives. But we're the ones who decide, no, I'm gonna take that back and hold on to that for a little while. Yeah. And it usually doesn't end very well. No, no. I think we, uh, you know, when we confess Jesus as Lord, we were surrendering the control. I thought that was the part of the deal. <laughs> well, but I think so often when we say we want him to be Lord, we want him to be Lord, but we don't turn over surrender mm. of every part of our life. To wow. Him. And wow. I think like you said, I think many of us are saved, but he's not Lord. Exactly. And he's not Lord until we surrender. That's yeah, right. That's good. Until we give it that's up. That's really good. That's really, really good. Really anxiety comes because we're putting our trust someplace or somewhere or in someone other than our Heavenly Father. Say right. that one more time. Anxiety typically comes because we are putting our trust in someone or something other than our Heavenly Father. Wow, that's really good. Yeah. You know, the Bible does address anxiety versus, Many you know, times, yeah, versus yeah. just depression. It, you yes. know, I think there's one place where he says, be anxious for, for not nothing. nothing. <laughs> and I remember one day in my quiet time, when God said, mm -hmm. do you trust me in everything? Because right. I say, be anxious for no, no thing. thing. Yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah. That's so good. You kind of mentioned before about identity. I think that's a really great yes. place for us to really dive into what, how do we establish our identity in Christ and not in ourselves? It really comes back to understanding that we are children of the one true God. Yeah. And as children of the one true God, we have the same inheritance that Jesus did. Mm -hmm. and, and how I talk about anxiety is, God has said in his word, I have not given you the spirit of fear, of fear. but of power and wow. of love and of sound mind. Mm -hmm. And powder, part of that power comes from recognizing We've got the same power within us in the Holy Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. Right. Yes. But too often, we don't utilize the power and mm. the love and the sound mind that he has given us. Right. We have the mind of Christ. Right. But that means we have to relinquish control and say, Holy Spirit, you right. can control my thoughts right. now. Yeah. So that would mean that the power is passive until we activate it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The power is, is, is present, it is present, but we're not, we're not benefiting with, from it until we believe. But the same is true 
of the gift of his peace. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason I subtitled the book, How to Reclaim the Peace God Promises, right. is because Jesus said, I have come to give you peace, not as the world gives, but as I alone can give. Yeah. But when we engage in worry, fear, and anxiety, it's like saying, oh, but I don't want that gift of peace. Right. It would be like on Christmas morning, I've got presents under the tree for my children. Not once have they said, oh, I don't really want those presents. <laughs> no, they want to open them. Yes. Right. God wants us to open and receive right. the peace that he has yeah, for that's us, right. the hope that we found in yeah, Jesus. That's right. I find uh, that too many times we make God the variable and us are, we are the constant. Mm -hmm. Where God is constantly giving, and He's constant, and you you quoted it just a minute ago that He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Yes. Mm -hmm. He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Yes. However, we're still waiting for Him to do something. But He's saying, well, "I'm waiting for you to activate what I've given you, Absolutely. or to receive what you're yeah. saying right yes. now. Receive." So how would, how would you talk to someone that maybe that they're dealing with? something, maybe they're dealing with an anxiety, maybe they're dealing with an identity crisis, maybe they're dealing, maybe even with depression. Um, we talked a little bit in the previous segment about the first steps is go to see a physician, mm -hmm. then maybe go to see maybe a, a therapist, a yes. clinical therapist, mm -hmm. or, you know, or, or spiritual, spiritual guidance from their pastor or yes. from the church. What, what is, what is something that, um, I'm kind of hinting at, we want to get your book. <laughs> and, and that's a great step. But truly, the most important thing is that we spend time in God's presence yes. and that we learn His Word because we can get out of anything. Yes. Right. Depression, anxiety, despair, right. doubt by knowing His Word mm -hmm. and truly taking every thought captive, which means assessing, is this a thought that lines up with scripture? Yeah. And if it does not, we can say no to anxiety. Right. Wow. And all we have to do is say, I'm not going to listen to you. You don't rule my life. Jesus rules my life. And here's what Jesus says about this. Right. God says, I've never left you. I will never forsake you. Be courageous. I am with you. Wow. It's powerful. Yeah, it's but really too good. often, we don't want to do the hard work. And that's, it is That's what I was thinking when you said that earlier. We don't realize, because the Bible says, don't be conformed to this world, be transformed. Mm -hmm. So there's something we have to do. Yes. And mm -hmm. I love that you are telling us the things that we need to physically do. Write the word of, because you know, we, back in our day when we were Christians, right. we did that. We wrote scripture down. We had it in our pocket. We had it on sticky notes. We had it everywhere. And we need to go back to that. Yes. And that really, the, the application of it. And that's what you're telling us to do is to apply it to our lives. We, we, we use that phrase, take every thought captive. Um, for someone that maybe this is their first time hearing something like that, how do you go about to take thought captives? How, do you, how, how would they go about in right now as an exercise? How would they do that? We all hear thoughts in our head. Mm -hmm. And it is a matter of slowing down and paying attention to what those thoughts that's, that's are. That's what I wanted to exactly. hear. Yeah, and then yeah. once you slow down and you pay attention to the thought, it might be, I'm so overwhelmed. Right. Then slow down and say, well, is that consistent with what the Bible says? Right. The Bible says that God gives us enough grace for the day, that he is our provider. My grace is sufficient for you. you so can if his do all grace things. is, yeah. you can do yeah. all things with Christ who right. gives you strength. So then when we hear those thoughts in the future, I'm so overwhelmed, you can stop and say, I don't have to be overwhelmed. Right because God will give me the strength mm -hmm. and the provision and the path I need to go. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. But it means taking time to pay attention to your thoughts. And we have between 50 and 70,000 thoughts a day. That's a lot of taking thoughts captive. Right. It is hard work. Yes. Yeah, but, but, uh, but what you said, it, it, they don't slow down. Mm -hmm. Because instead of moving from, you know, slow down to assess I'm overwhelmed, where that that causes that reaction of that behavior yes. of now I'm overwhelmed, so I'm acting out of overwhelmed. Yes. Versus, wait a minute, God's grace is sufficient for me, and I nothing's going to happen that's beyond our control. So I'm peaceful. I can allow myself to be peaceful, joyful, productive, yes. and not have unrealistic expectations. And Jesus was our perfect model for that. Mm -hmm. He said nothing that the 
that his heavenly father didn't tell him to say. Wow. Right. He did nothing yeah. that his heavenly father didn't tell him to do. Right. Yeah. And we never saw Jesus running from appointment to appointment. No. no. He had three years to complete his mission. Right. He Amazing. was never in a hurry. Amazing. Right. Yeah. He Amazing. trusted his heavenly father yes. and that's what we need to do. Right. Even when it seemed like he was a few days late at Lazarus tomb. It seemed like it seemed. to the people. Who are right. waiting. But he had even said, this is not unto death. Right. right. So it was a matter of, did they trust what he said? Right. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very good. This is, uh, where can, for those of, that want to connect with your ministry and connect with, where can they go to connect with you? They can find me on my website at drmichelleb.com. And I'm on all the social media as Dr. Michelle Bankson. And my books are available wherever books are sold. Yeah. So on your screen, you're seeing drmichellebankson.com. Uh, Make sure you, uh, you, you get on there and, and take action. Take action and peruse that website. Yes. And uh, especially, and, and maybe, maybe, just maybe, you don't aren't dealing with those, but you probably right. know someone that is. Right. So how, uh, there was one thing that you said in the pre, that we, I want to ask you. So what is the staggering statistic concerning depression right now? By next year, 2020, depression will be our greatest epidemic worldwide, wow. greater than heart disease, cancer, and AIDS all put together. Wow. And one in four will end up struggling with depression. So if you don't struggle, I guarantee you have a friend or loved one who does. Yes. That's why they need the word of God right. first, but that you also need someone that packages it like Dr. Bankson that can help you understand and kind of guide you through the Bible. You are right now in the works of getting some of your material to kind of a Bible study type way of, of going and navigating through this material. It's going to be life changing. Yes, it is. It's going to be, it's going to change your life. It will affect you. So this is good. This is good stuff. Yeah. This has been great. We love you, Dr. Michelle. Yeah. Thank you, you so much yeah. for sharing your story. Yeah, thank you. Jason Fowler's coming again, unless I am myself. Wow. Yeah.
I hope you all paid attention to that song. I hope I hope you allowed. I hope you turned it up. Yeah. And let that presence just fill wherever you're wherever you're viewing this program because that uh, the whole atmosphere in this studio has just yeah. has just changed. It is is beautiful. Thank you, yeah, Jason. That's the heart of a worshiper. Yeah. It's. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's. That's, I mean, we were all yeah. worshipers before we were anything else. Yeah. Yes. Before we were yes. preachers, before yes. we were uh, in our, our calling. Our, that's yes. the eternal. Yes. You know, because long yes. after we're done pastoring, long after we're doing evangelizing, we're going to be worshiping yes. 10,000, 100,000 million years yes. over into the next, into mm -hmm. the next <laughs> life. So we'll still be worshiping. Yes. So that's the highest call. Yes. Uh, that's wonderful. Who do we have on now? We have Dr. Dixon and we have Prophetess Akia, and they're going to share their amazing story of hope and healing, of all the things that God has done in and through them. They are living examples of God's healing power, his saving power, and his protection. So we are so grateful to have you guys here. Thank you so much for thank being you. here. Uh, thank God for y'all having us. Thank, you, thank, thank you. God for being here. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure. Yes, it is. And I'm going to allow my daughter. Since uh, I talk a little bit longer, <laughs> 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 to go, <laughs> go ahead. We thank God. I thank God for being here and what mm -hmm. He's done in our life. And I thank God. Just want to pause a minute. Yes. Thank God for my mother, who is my pastor, for being a great example of Christ and His love, even in my life. Wow. I thank God. Um, just to make a long story short, coming up, I raised up in the church, but the enemy always fights us when we have a gift. And so I thank God that, you know, I was in a low place in my life and decided to commit suicide. Wow. So I got in my car, I had a white Buick Sabre at that time, put a cloth in the gas tank, lit it up. I did that twice and the car did not burn. I knew wow. enough about Christ to know then that my life was valuable. And I, God put in my spirit after he called me into the body of Christ and let me know Sometimes we try to fix a spiritual problem by physical means, yeah. and we can never do that right. until we come into who God is. And once yes. we connect with our creator, then we actually begin to know ourselves and yeah. know what our purpose is. Yeah. And I just want to let people know, you know, God loves us no matter what. Yes. Right. And there's no extent to what he can do. Yes. Yeah. It's beautiful to see two different generations. And so oh, yes. you represent the yes. present generation. Yes. Yes. And so thank you for speaking life into your generation. Thank, thank you. you for not being afraid of yes. allowing what you went through to be something God can use to help you help other people. Oh, yes. I, I give God the glory for it. I'm so grateful every day. Yes. 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 Every so, day. Mama Bear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thank God for the journey. Yes. I was one that um, mother sent to church. She didn't go, but she sent us, and I was one that was always knowing that it was something that inside right. of me that God wanted. Right. Yeah. But I run. Mm -hmm. I yeah. run for a long time. Right. Yeah. When I began to seek God yeah. mm -hmm. to be saved, to be delivered, to be set free, mm -hmm. and I had a divine visitation, I'll never forget it. And he told me, I've chosen you to mm -hmm. follow your forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm. Wow. The Bible said he give every man a measure of faith. That's right. right. Yes. That day when that divine visitation and the hand of God touched me mm -hmm. to let me know that he had chosen me for a purpose. Yeah. Right. That faith he gave me mm -hmm. is the faith that carried me all the way in 1995. Wow. When the enemy attacked at my body with breast cancer in the wow. right breast. Mm -hmm. It was in soup, which means it was in the ducts. Right. And uh, they gave me five years. Mm -hmm. But, but God. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Man can give you what they want to. Yeah, right. right. But God. Right. Yeah. And I never forget the enemy always trying to try our faith. Yes. Right. And uh, cause us to want to give up on God in the situations that we are going through. But when God give you that faith, right? Yeah, that's and He's right. a whole fast that you have that no man take your crown. Yeah. Right. When I, when I, when He, when not when I found when He found I found Him, but when He, Amen, called me. Yes. Right. In 2003, it came back. Wow. In the mm -hmm. left breast, mm -hmm. too close to big. Right. I just had had a mammogram in February. Mm -hmm. By June, this thing had grown by big of a, as a, of a grapefruit. Wow. wow. 
that just that big and seven lymph nodes affected. Wow. Stage four. Mm -hmm. So they gave wow. me up. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, God yeah. did. That's right. That's right. God did That's give right. me up. Yeah. He healed me of cancer, and I realized why God did it. He came in, He came heal me twice mm -hmm. in my family, mm -hmm. because. The Lord knows all things. Yeah. Yeah. He knew that the enemy was going to come and attack my mother mm -hmm. with yeah. breast cancer. Right. Yeah. But I tell you what, when God see, when somebody see our faith, yes. right, it That's strengthened right. them. For what he said, right. we draw strength one from another. Yeah. Exactly. She took chemotherapy one time said, and made her sick. She says, I'm not going to take it no more. And my mother's still living today. Wow. Yes. Heal from cancer. Wow. Well, it hit my sister. Right. Breast cancer. A rare form mm -hmm. in 2004, and God healed her. Wow. Yes. God is a good God. Yes, he, he is. is. My grandmother was stricken with uh, cancer, but she lived to be 92 years old. Wow. God had healed her. Wow. Yes. Well, in 2015, you know, we all ladies, we all want to get married. Mm -hmm. And God gave me my soulmate, and I know that, and I knew that it was my soulmate. 2015, my husband got the report that he had. Lung cancer. Wow. In the middle lung. Mm -hmm. And God told me, he said, tell your husband, mm -hmm. take the Bible, mm -hmm. put it on the scripture. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was wounded for our transgression. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bruised for our evil. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. right. And the chastisement of our peace yeah. was Amen. upon him and with this strike. We are not yeah. we're here, but are, are here. Yeah. We are yeah. Healed. Sleep with it until time for surgery. Yeah. He had the surgery. They looked over one thing. He had colon cancer, too. Mm -hmm. But when God healed him of the lung cancer, he also healed him of the colon cancer. Wow. He didn't have to have chemotherapy. That's right. He didn't have to have radiation. Yeah. He walked out that hospital cancer-free and still cancer-free today. Wow. Thank you, I tell Jesus. You, and my message Thank to you, people Jesus. is, Thank you, Jesus. you know, people sometimes think when they hear that word cancer that it is a death sentence. It's it is no. not a death it's not. sentence. No. When Jesus had rose from the dead yes. with all power in his hand yes. and gave it over, gave us the keys. And, yes. Come here, Peter. Yes. I give you the keys yeah. to the kingdom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I thank God that you know, even in that, the members in the church saw the faith. And when one member, Alma Bear, when it attacked her body with cancer, and she believed God, and Amen. she healed her day. Yes. Amen. Wow. Even ovarian cancer, one member, she healed her day. Amen. Yes. Wow. That's my message. Wow. Yeah. To people that think that the devil have in our power. Right. Yeah. The right. Bible said that he give us power. That's right. right. Over all the power yeah. of the enemy. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. we have to realize that. That's right. We have yeah. to have the faith. Right. So many times in the word of God, Jesus said that, you know, it, it says that Jesus was able to perform miracles. Mm -hmm. Right. Outside of his own country. Right. 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 Because of what they did not believe. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen so many people Amen. not believe, give up. Blessing. And miss their blessing. Yes. Yeah. And God told me, He said, You shall live. Amen. And declare the glory of God. Amen. Right. And I thank God, my daughter, when 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 that lump came in her breast, they were just last year. Mm -hmm. And they were saying that, well, because your mother and so, your mama's mother, your sister, family, and and genetics, your, yeah. yeah. And that you, it, it probably counts. I said, no, my daughter said, no, that's not my journey. Amen. Yeah, that's God right. Said, that's not her journey. That's yeah, that's right. And they went in and tested it. It was no cancer. That's Amen. right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. 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 So do you pastor now? Do you, yes. Are you pastor a church? Yes, I do, God. I tell you, that happened as came out the, of, of wanting to win, win my family to Christ. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, when did you start that? In, uh, well, it actually started, it started the church in 2000. Okay. But teaching my family about God, which he told me, he said, if you teach your family about me, they'll want to get to know me. Yeah. So I invited them to my home and everything. And we would just sit around and, you know, study the Bible and I would teach them and everything. And so 2000, God, it wasn't something that I seeked out for. It was something that God led me into. Right, right, right. To build, you know, to establish a ministry. 
And then in uh, 2014, we built our own ministry from the, we was renting. Right. We built, built it from the ground up. God. To God be the glory. Oh. Yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. To God be the glory so amen. people can, you know, and the one message that he taught, I'll never forget, I had a vision. It was a drunk man. He came and put some seats in my hand. Mm -hmm. And God said, I'm going to send people in. They're going to look, they're going to look like regular church folk. Right. right. They're going to look. Funny looking seed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All I want you to do, preach the word, right. show them love, that's yeah. and I'll clean them up. Oh, that's yeah. Right. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> that's good. And that's, that's been the good. motto. And, and it's so beautiful because it's October. Yes. yes. And it's breast cancer awareness. Mm. And so you're Is that why you're wearing oh. pink? That's why I'm wearing pink. Yes. yes. <laughs> to encourage people that God is a healer. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you have given a countless examples. Mm. And so to someone who's watching this, who is struggling, yes. what would you share what would you share with them? As a survivor. As a as a uh, overcomer. I, I like that survivor. Over, yes, survivor. Yes. I like that because that's what I am. Yes. And I, I want to say to them, not to give in to the signals, mm -hmm. the signs, mm -hmm. right? The symptoms, the symptoms, yes. right? What I mean, signals. Yeah. I mean by people. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sending negativism, oh, the paradox, yes. right? And, and 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 going along with what the doctors say, mm -hmm. not to not to give up, Amen. and not to give in. Yes. Mm -hmm. God told me when I first got that cancer came, and it hit me. We are human. Yes. I'm saved. Mm -hmm. I'm working for God. So why this happened to me? Right. He asked those questions. Yeah. God asked me, whose report you going to believe? Right. Whose report mm -hmm. you going to believe? Yes. If we have faith, the grain of a mustard, mustard seed. Yes. Right. We can speak to mouth and be there removed. Right. Don't you let nothing shake your faith. Yes. It is the faith that's going to move ha the hand of God. Oh, yes. It don't matter if it's stage four. It does not matter if it is spread, whatever it is spread. God is still a healer. Yes. That's yes. right. And yes. I encourage you to get in that word. Yes. Sleep with it if you have to. Oh, yes. yes. That's why God told my husband, told me to tell him to put that Bible on his chest. Yes. Right. The word I have hidden in my heart. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. So Wrap him up in and let him sleep to it for, for, in, with it until surgery. Yeah. Guess what? God stopped that cancer from spreading anywhere else. Amen. And so I say to you, have faith. Amen. Have true faith. Right. And believe that God is a healer. Yeah. 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 That um, that brings me to this. Do do you do you see? Do you have regular prayer ministry yes. to in your church yes. for this? And you encourage? Do you do you see other people in your church? That are being healed of, oh, yes. of, of those kinds of things. Not just cancer. Uh, we have one member. He um, had um, hepatitis C. Mm -hmm. C. Mm. Oh, C. Yeah. Wow. And God healed him. Wow. wow. Mm. And uh, other members that then had uh, conditions, uh, yes. blood pressure, high blood pressure, different conditions. Yes. Wow. Yeah, we have prayer, um, deliverance night. Yes. Um, and that's a prayer night. And be honest. We pray uh, at the church. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> for yeah. anybody that want to come and get prayer and believe God for their healing. Yeah. So how could someone come and be a poverty ministry? Where, where is it? Yeah where, yeah. yeah, where is oh, it? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's we are. it's uh, 15, Highway 1501 uh, in Haddock, Georgia. Wonderful. Uh-huh, 22. Yeah. Uh-huh, Highway and When do you guys have services, how could someone be a part of your ministry? Go ahead, though. We have <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Keith. Actually, we have prayer um, every Thursday from 7 to 7.30, and then we have Bible study from 7.30 to 8.30, and we don't leave the children out. We have a, a children's yes. Bible study, which is awesome, by the way. Oh. So the, my kids, ever they are just growing I'm just so excited about what they're doing in that ministry. Amen. But so we have children's Bible study as well. And then on Sundays, we have Sunday school starts at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. And then our worship service starts at 1120. But we also have a children's church that started at 11. Because you can't leave the kids out. Yeah. They got to learn on their way, on their own. So what's the number or how, how they can touch? We're on Facebook. We're Greater Faith Revelation Outreach Ministries. They can reach us even on our phone number, 478-456-6307, anytime. Yeah, on it's, on the, it's on the, it was on the <laughs> yes. screen just a minute ago. But uh, yes. we, we just, you're on, I mean, you're 
they're on the social media, yes. you know, platforms Facebook, and all that yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. So yes. they can reach it, reach you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it's one of these it's one of these times that we need we need ministries that are yes. not just teachers. I believe that teaching yes. is uh, the yes. is a fundamental necessity. Yes. yes. But teaching and teaching alone is not enough exactly you know and exactly. i and i believe in the word i believe in yes, teaching and yes, preaching yes. Now, that's a, that's that's a, it's essential exactly but at the same time you also need that prayer ministry you exactly. need the ministry of the holy spirit exactly. you yes. need that power yes, ministry yes. and too many times churches lean one heavily one way or the other exactly and and i do believe that you need balance yes, growth in both right. but exactly. You, you guys have seemed to demonstrate that, that, you, yeah, we we do have strong prayer yes, ministry. We, we have a strong word ministry, but we've got another ministry as exactly. well. Exactly. And we believe exactly. in miracles. Exactly, yeah. because yeah. we don't want people to, because the Bible says that after the Holy Ghost have come upon you, yeah. you shall receive power. Right. Yeah. And as the body of Christ, we should never seem like a powerless body. There, that's there you go. True. That's right. And there you go. so many times, you, you people wonder where where is the power? Exactly. And the the, the media it want to report all negative stuff. Right. I know at one a one prayer service years ago, uh, a young girl, a parent brought the young girl in. She was blind, mm -hmm. couldn't see. Mm -hmm. But they believed God to yes. to hear her. Yeah. She got healed that night. She wow. Did. Yeah, she wow. Did. We wanted it. The, the parents wanted it put in the paper on mm -hmm. a, on the radio. But they didn't believe. Yeah, mm -hmm. they you didn't said want to report that. It you said that because you said they didn't believe. The problem is that Jesus couldn't do miracles in his Thank own time. Because so that should be something we really have to focus on. Yes. These signs will follow those that, that believe. believe. Thank you. You got to believe that the signs are going to follow you. Yes. Because that's God's power yes. accessed in yes. our lives. Yes. And thank you for sharing this, oh, showing yes. us that. That's because wonderful. Jesus said. When I come back, he didn't mm. say, will I find love on the earth? He didn't no. say, will I find peace on the no. earth? Jesus. He, didn't he didn't say, will, will I, I find, find power. Christian he or power, power. power. Yeah. or miracles. Yeah. The one thing he said, faith. will I find yeah. faith on That's the right. earth? That's right. This has been a powerful time, and we have enjoyed thoroughly. I don't know if you, I don't know if you're feeling it there, but yes, feel we are it. feeling it up in here. Uh, we have got some really amazing things, yes. but we've got some people that are uh, at the phones yes. that are waiting for you to call in. If you have a prayer need, call in. We're going to hear from who's uh, there at the phones now. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining me here at the Atlanta Live Prayer Room. My name is Marissa Daniel, and I am a proud member of Beyond the Veil Ministries, located in Fayetteville, Georgia, under the leadership of Senior Pastor Sheldon, Pr Sheldon Pritchard. My sisters and brothers, I come to you this evening to please dial in if you are in need of prayer. We have some prayer soldiers that are here today that is willing to pray with you. So do not hesitate. Please pick up the phone and dial the number at the bottom of your screen at 770-300-9828. My family, we will all love to pray with you. Now, for those of you who are in need of prayer, who want to give their lives to Christ, today is the beginning of your life. So feel free to give us a call. We would love to pray with you. God says when two or more are gathered in his name, that he is in the midst. So please pray with me. Father, I know I am a sinner, and I ask you to forgive me. I believe Christ died for me, and God has raised Jesus from the dead. I want to turn away from my sins. Jesus, come into my heart and be my personal Lord and Savior. I promise to obey you and follow you all the days of my life. Now, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. If anybody is in need of prayer, if anyone just needs an encouraging word, feel free. My church is here beyond the bell ministries are is here to pray with you my name is marissa daniel now let's go back to the studio you know uh the bible says that jesus became the word that in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god and the word was made flesh and the bible says that he we we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the father full of grace and full of truth you know jesus was truth he set the bar up higher yes. than the law of Moses mm -hmm. because the law of Moses talks about your behavior, but Jesus talked about the heart. heart. 
he didn't he didn't just talk about what you should do. He said, you've heard that, you know, you can't commit adultery, but if a man right. looks on a woman or unless right. he's already done it, you can't be angry, but you, you said thou shalt not murder, but if you're angry and you hold anger, you're already guilty of it. Right. But the deal is, is that Jesus, he did set the bar up higher, but the deal is, is that he gave us grace, grace. To, and, and basically put us yes. on his shoulder so we can meet the bar. Wow. So today, if you're dealing with something and you're just saying, God, I just, it feels overwhelming. It feels impossible. Lord, put me on your shoulders and help me reach that bar. Yes. That's what our prayer partners are there. We're about to go to break, but while we're at break, we want you to go to the phones. You may have never done that before, but dial that, dial that number. 770-300-9828. We'll be right back right after the break. Well, I want to remind you that God's Word says, I know the plans I have for you to give you a hope and a future. I hope that this episode will help you to have hope and to realize that while you may be unique, your situation is not. You're not alone. Reach out. Call the prayer line. Let someone pray with you regarding anxiety, depression, or hopelessness. We want you to not feel alone, so please call the prayer line, and our prayer warriors will pray with you and agree with you, and you will see God move in your life personally and intimately because he loves you just that much. Now we're going to go over to the set, and you guys are going to hear Jeff and Jason. Wow. We are, it is an honor to be here in this set, and we have been hearing all night from Jason Fowler. You may have heard him on the radio. You may have heard him on other television shows, whatever. He is a voice that God is raising up right now to bring a new sound. With every new wave of what the Holy Ghost does in every generation, he raises up psalmists and singers to carry that message by song. And I'm so glad to be here with Jason. Jason, it is Jason Fowler, he is, it, it's a great honor to be here with you. It's great to be here with you too. And thank you for having me on uh, Atlanta Live. What I always like to do, I always like the back side of this. Because when we hear, when we hear the music, I, all the musicians that we listen to, whether it's, you know, even secular, I, I kind of want to know the story behind the story. How did you get, how did you get here? Well, I grew up in a musical family. My dad okay. sings. My uncle, uh, he's uh, a doctor in uh, music. He 
As a matter of fact, he comes on here with his wife, Joy. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's Chris Fowler and Joy Fowler. Oh, okay, yeah. They're worship leaders in the area. And um, my dad, um, like I said, he sang for years, and my other uncle played guitar. And I remember going over to my grandmother's house, and everybody would just sit around and play oh, music wow. from the Almond Brothers yeah. to gospel. And so from an early age, I heard the calling to play music. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's easy in those environments when, you know, like the family get-togethers where they all start saying, one just starts singing and they, everybody just, you got all three, four-part harmonies, you know. Yeah, the blood harmonies is what they call yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. yeah so that's as cool. of, as you know, when I was young, I heard the calling to play music. I, yeah. I remember I heard my first, um, or I got my first guitar. And I'll never forget that um, I heard somebody playing. I think it was Sweet Home Alabama. Sure. It was one of my friends, and um, and I said I want to do that, you know. And I didn't realize that Jesus was actually calling me to play music, mm. and I went down a different path. Yeah. I actually ended up going down um, the path of rock and roll and everything that comes yeah. with it. I mean, I yeah. got into um, the drugs, alcohol, yeah. and. Um, I believe that the enemy puts counterfeits in our lives sure. in this world to make us think that that's going to fill us up and make us be fulfilled because we're born to worship yeah. and we're going to end up worshiping something. If we don't worship yeah. God, yeah. we're going to end up falling. Could be a boat, could be a house. Could be. It could, it be. could be a relationship. It could be a relationship, right. And so um, I remember thinking that if I made it rich and famous, if I, if I got a record deal that everything was going to be okay and ended up getting a record deal by that time, um, I was full of um, just living of the world, you know, wow. and I would got away from... Um, going to church at an early age and and so I just was searching for that that love and that yeah. hope and that wholeness yeah. that you can only find in Jesus and and um, got the record deal was sitting on top of the world but I was lost and broken inside I felt like that um, I could be in the middle of a crowd but I was just alone yeah and I um, I think God had a different plan for me and like I said I'm sure of it. from an early <laughs> age he yeah. He was calling me, but yeah. I didn't realize it was, it was yeah. the voice of Jesus. And yeah. another company came in and bought the record label. We had a quarter million dollar record deal, went into Muscle Shoals with a guy that produced the Almond Brothers. Oh, wow. and, you know, I thought I was on top of the world, but another company came in, bought the record label, and um, they shelved the record. They said, we're not going to put it out. And mm. so I put all my hopes and dreams in that. And wow. It failed. And so I ended up searching and continued to search broken, broken to pieces actually. Mm. I was broken so much that I ended up homeless in Atlanta, Georgia. Wow. Um, I got knocked down to my knees. The pain in my life was just so tremendous. I didn't have anywhere to go. I didn't have any hope in my life. And I'll never forget the moment that I, I cried out. I was kicked out of a drug dealer's house in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm just going to be real with you. Sure. And um, I realized right then and there who had done this to me. It wasn't mm. God. It wasn't my right. family. It wasn't anybody. It was it was my habits and, and yeah. my way of living. And yeah. I ended up getting knocked down to my knees, but at that moment I knocked on the door and I said, God, I need you. Wow. He opened the door and said, where have you been? My long lost son, go get the best robe. Yeah. Make the feast. Come on. Come get on. that ring. Come on. My son was lost, but now he's yeah. found. Wow. He was blind, but now he sees. Yeah. And I got into a Christ based recovery center. And uh, Celebrate Recovery is kind of sweeping the nation. It's yeah. a Christ based recovery program. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this December, I'll, I'll have been sober 14 years. I rededicated my life to Jesus. That's awesome. Finally. 14 years. Wow. <laughs> I heard yeah, that's awesome. and realized that the voice that was calling me was Jesus. Wow. And so now um, my wife, she says something I love to say to, to people. It kind of makes sense is if you're playing music anything other than for God, for Jesus, for his glory, then you're really making a bunch of noise. <laughs> and so that's I. That's a wise wife. <laughs> she's very wise. She loves Jesus way more than me. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up, uh, I started writing my first record, my Christian first Christian record, 2014, it came out, 2016, it was yeah. my second one. Working on my third one, it's just been finished, and I put out a single for pre-order today, that very first song that I played, Healer. Healer? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. was broken, bound, and hopeless. I had nowhere to go. Wow. 
you know, and then Jesus, you're my healer. He's the one. Wow, wow, you know, wow. So that's, it's kind of like the little bits of your life just kind of exposed, you know, in a song, you know, just saying, okay, this is where I was at. This is what happened, but this is what you did for me. Amen. And, you know, the, the, the thing is we talk about our problems, which we want, you know, God wants us to do that. He says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so you can be healed. Right. And that power of healing, um, he's given it to us. Yeah. And he said, you know, it's by your belief, it's by your faith that you'll be healed. And y'all were talking about um, how Jesus couldn't perform miracles in his own town because yeah. they didn't believe. Right. And so for me, when I started seeing the faith work in my life and, and coming from death to life, yeah. it radically changed me so much that I wanted to give everything to him. And so the voice that I've always been hearing to play music was for him, and it's him calling me. So now I just want to tell the world about how amazing yeah. God is, yeah. and no matter how lost or broken you are, he's the healer. Yeah. He's the great physician. That's what I tell people all the time. They say, what do you do? I said, I have the greatest job in the world. <laughs> right. I, get to go, I get to travel the world and tell people how good Jesus really is. And they, and they think, what, you do this full time? Yeah, been doing it full time for 33 years. It's the greatest job on the world. And he provides, doesn't he? He provides. He provides for the birds. He's like, they don't store up anything, and yet I provide for them. He put manna in the wilderness. Yeah. I mean, it's by faith that I think that uh, we're able to do miraculous things. Yeah. And in my life, I never thought I would be playing music, touring around, touring around the United States and Canada and playing Christian music. But it's been such an impactful thing in my life. Yeah. Like I said, I was lost, but right. now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. I'm a new creation through Christ, and I want to tell the world. That's it. Yeah. It is. That's great. So where, where I mean, do you, do you, how many dates do you uh, typically do per year? I mean, are you, are you touring quite a bit? What yeah. You? This, this year has been pretty busy. I, um, I toured around with J.J. Weeks, uh, opened up for him, and played with his band for a little while this year. What started out to be 12 dates ended up over 47 dates. Wow, wow. God just kept on providing. And um, then I toured solo dates as well and um, played with the guys from Petra and Whiteheart. Oh, come um, on. Kind of yeah. met those guys. Yeah, that's, and my, that's my era. It is. <laughs> well, <laughs> John, I, <laughs> it, you know what's amazing is traveling around the country and seeing how many people have come to know Jesus through music, um, you know, of Petra and right. Heart and some of the old right. school. Listen, gospel. old school was, for me, was second chapter of Acts, oh, Res man. Band. <laughs> okay, Sweet Comfort Band. Now I'm dating myself because that's, that's, that, that was that first contemporary kind of music that was coming out that didn't sound like the hymnals but was more the 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 flavoring so to speak it's all it's the amazing. same message the gospel is the stake but it was the flavoring that i needed yeah it's the vehicle for the message and yeah. you know what uh when i travel around with those guys and billy smiley he's he was in whiteheart one of the founding mm -hmm. members but they a lot of people don't know that he produced the gaither uh, vocal band. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, John Schlitt was in a secular band called Head East. <laughs> and so traveling around with those guys has been really amazing. But um, I'm gearing up for this next year for my new album to come out. And uh, I tour around and I get to talk about Jesus and pray for people wow. and tell people the message of uh, restoration mm -hmm. and healing that happened in my life. And when you share your story like that with somebody, all of a sudden um, they open up. Yeah. You know, like you said something a minute ago about the music, yeah. the front line, the worship leaders are on the yeah. front line of worship. Yeah. And, Absolutely. Uh, and so I believe that uh, the enemy will try to use that too, but mm -hmm. the enemy's been defeated. Let me ask you a question. You know, music, uh, there's so many different kinds of voices out there. Sometimes people, they find their, they, they, they struggle with their value because of comparison. Mm. Uh, they don't, but I find that we don't listen to a singer because they remind us of someone else. What, what do you say when someone says you remind me of, or how do you, how do you notch out your own definition, your own voice, so to speak? Well, uh, when I started out, um, that was one of the reasons why I, I think I went into a lot of addiction and used things to make me feel better because we want to be loved. That song I played a minute ago, Unless I Am Myself. Yeah. I believe God created us exactly who He wants us to be. Yeah. And that He loves us so much. Not, I mean, He died on the cross for us, even though we were still sinners. But for each one of us, we are unique and we're children of God. Right. And He loves us. Right. Okay. 
as an artist too, we want to have success and we try to find that love in different places. So yeah, we can tend to start out um, acting like other people or, right. or you know, how many likes do you have on Facebook? How many likes do you have right. on Instagram? We love to be loved. But if we can really grasp a hold of our identity through Christ That's and it. not through the lens of our hurts, right. not through the lens of our habits, not through the lens of That's our hangups, so um, then what happens is we, we get to know who he thinks we are, yeah. who he knows we are. Yeah. And we start to believe those things. And so I think that getting in the Word, I, I believe in three things that uh, I think the 12 steps really cover a grade of Celebrate Recovery is learning how to trust God, being in the Word, yeah. um, cleaning your house out. That means, yeah. you know, confessing your sins to each other and don't walk around with the burdens, give them to God and, and confess them to others. And the third thing, which is huge, is service. Service. I think we need to serve, and we don't know a lot of times our purpose in life until we start serving. Absolutely. If you don't know your purpose now, Absolutely. I want you to just go and serve at your local church. Go and serve anywhere at your local church. Here we are. Yeah. Serve at your local church right. and do it with all your heart, all your soul, yes. and all your mind, and do it until you start to feel like you come alive, and that's where you find your purpose. Do that with all, with all for God and for others and you will live a long and happy, healthy life. You know? Absolutely. I believe. You know, and I think w one of the things that uh, uh, Pastor Dixon said, she said, well, here, here I'm serving the Lord, here I'm doing this, and then, and now I get this, now I get this cancer. Just because you're in the perfect will of God doesn't mean you can't st still be bitten by a snake. Oh, he said we're gonna have struggles. You know, exactly, and I think that one of, the, one of the misconceptions is if I'm in the perfect will of God, serving the Lord, serving his people, that I'm impervious, to something bad happening, and and they, they, how God can you let this happen? Well, the deal is, is that there is an enemy out there that wants to steal, kill, and to destroy. Oh, he wants to get our souls. <laughs> yeah, but the deal is, is that that is something that God will walk us through. Even if we are bitten by a snake, we can just you shake it off and feel no harm. And that's what you've done. That's what you're helping other people do. And thanks for being on tonight. I'm really, really grateful. Thanks it. for having you me. You gonna on. sing another one? I will. You gonna sing? Are we going to? Are we singing another one right now? Because I mean, it is exciting. I want, we want to hear. We want to hear this guy. All right, here we go. All right, so <laughs> take it away, man. Your treasure and 
jars of clay so take this hard load I'll be your vessel world to see your life in me amazing grace how sweet the sound save a wretch like me can see the love in your eyes laying yourself down raising up the broken to life Acts 4, verse 8 then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, not before, but only after, the Holy Spirit said to them, rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today, and this is the today of our nation, because we've done a good deed for a crippled man. Do you want to know how he was healed? Peter goes on to saying, let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, the man who you crucified, the man but whom God raised from the dead. There is salvation in no one else but him in Jesus. No other thing, no other person, can save but him. And that's my prayer for you today. The elders looked upon them and they saw the boldness of this message. And they said, they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. But they also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. 
And so my prayer again to you is there's no other name but Jesus. No other way for salvation but Jesus. It doesn't take a person who knows too much to have the faith of Peter. Once the Holy Spirit comes into you, God can save you if you merely ask. It is a free gift to be received today. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. And if you want to make that prayer, uh, prayer lines are open right now. Someone will walk you through the prayer of salvation. Maybe you don't know how to pray or what the words are to say. There's someone waiting right there, right now. Uh, they care about you. We pray over our audience. We pray over the program. We pray over each and everything to make sure that you have an opportunity, the best opportunity to get introduced, mm -hmm. not to just the Christian religion, wow. but to get to know Jesus. Jesus. Because you can argue, you can argue with doctrines. You can't argue miracles. That's right. You can't argue mm -hmm. transformed lives. And so over this, over this program, we've heard from Dr. Bankson. We've heard from uh, Pastor Dixon, Prophet Sakia. Yeah. You've, heard, you, you've heard Jason Fowler. Yeah. And uh, the theme here tonight is that God can give you hope in a hopeless situation. Yeah. And he can give you transformation, power. He's your healer. He is the one that transforms your whole life, mm -hmm. spirit, soul, and body regardless of what your situation is all things are possible with God but all things are possible to those who believe so tonight we hope you've been encouraged we hope your faith has been stirred now don't just sit on your faith act on it do something with it do speak say something confess it or act, and one of the ways you can act on it is by going to the phone and calling and saying, listen, I prayed the prayer with them. I said to say, I, I, want, to, I want to know how to, where, what's the next step? What's, what do I do next? Yes. What can I do? And that is, that's on you. We don't know that you're out there until you call. So if you can call that number 770-300-9828. And for those of you who may be a little concerned about calling, we have Dr. Bankson. She's actually going to pray us out because sometimes it's hard to make a phone call. Sometimes yeah. it's hard to it take is. a next step. Yeah. So God is providing you with someone that's here <laughs> physically who has struggled with what you're struggling that's with. Right. And she is going to pray for you and for all the people who are listening. Like she talked about earlier, it may not be touching you, but it might be touching the person next to that's you. That's right. So Dr. Bankston, would you please pray us out? It would it be my honor. Father. Father God, I thank yes. you that not only are you our creator, but you are our redeemer, our restorer, and yes. our healer. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for the breath and the life that this show gives. Yes. And for all who might be watching right now, who struggle in some way and need your healing touch, yes. we thank you that if they ask, yes. that you say where two or more are gathered and we yes. have more than two here gathered, that it will be done unto them. Yes. That's right. So Father, I just ask that anyone within the sound of my voice yes. that needs your healing touch yes. would proclaim it right now yes. and receive it because yes. you are good yes. and you are trustworthy. Yes. And we pray for each soul yes. that they would be healed in yes. Jesus name. In Jesus Amen. name. Amen. 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 You know, one of my favorite passages is in Luke chapter five, where Amen. Jesus says, which is easier to say, <laughs> receive forgiveness of sins or be healed. Yes. For he, he didn't say which one's harder. Oh, right. He said which one's easier to say. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is, is that the same sacrifice that purchased one right. was the same yeah. sacrifice to purchase the other. Right. So it's not on our ability to just no. grab. It's on our ability to say, Lord, I thank you for what you did. Yes. I receive it and it's mine. I take it now. Yes. And, the, and the prayer of faith is always, yes. is always accompanied with praise saying, thank you, Lord, it's Jesus. mine, I have it now. Yes. I ask people all the time, what would you, how would you praise the Lord? Mm. <laughs> yes. If what you just prayed for showed up, right. that's the way you need <laughs> to see, praise now on right the front now. end right. in anticipation yes. because yes. As, as far as God's done, <laughs> it's already it's done. Already it's, done. Already done. it's already done. It's already done. It's already so done. this has been a great program. Yes. Thank you for thank each and every God one of you this. that have been here, yes. giving your testimony, giving your giving us your expertise, giving us your, your life experience yes. and how Jesus has redeemed you. Thank you, Renee. It's a pleasure. 
serving with you. It was a pleasure serving <laughs> with you. God bless you. God Thank bless you, you for being our viewers tonight. Thank you. And if you, you if you want to see this again, it airs again 7 a.m. next morning. And so you also can see it on all the Facebook, different media. YouTube, Facebook. Truly, and yeah. our own WACTR. Look us up. We got it all. It's everywhere. <laughs>